All right, continuing on our lecture on literary analysis and close reading strategies. This is part two of the video. I promise to keep this one a little shorter. Uh, we're talking about the methods we can use as a part of our close reading strategies. And we want to make sure we're asking questions about the patterns you've noticed, critical questions that fall into that good question category as opposed to the overly simplified or um, questions that we just can't argue because it's too obvious what the answer is. We talked about foreshadowing, a literary device that gives the reader an advanced hint about what's to come later in the story. Uh, there's a great line in our novel, uh, Poirot is talking with Monsieur Bach, and he says something very ominous like, I think we are, may all be tied together by death. And you're like, why would you say that? We're on a train, we're going to our destination, nobody's going to die on the train, that's ridiculous. And then someone gets brutally murdered, that's foreshadowing. Any of those statements, I feel like it might engage Murphy's Law, or you feel like you should knock on wood after it's been said because someone might have jinxed something. Uh, those are all good examples of foreshadowing. Whenever you're like, why would you say that? You're going to make things worse. That's probably a good example of the literary device foreshadowing in the text. Uh, some practical methods. What I want you to do as you're reading through this book is to get a highlighter or a pen, however you want to mark it up, and I want you to highlight or underline three specific things. And this is going to make writing your essay at the end of the book a hundred times easier because you won't have to flip back through this entire book to find the quote you were thinking of. You're already going to have it highlighted. You're already going to have notes in the margins that say, hey, this is a great example of, and you'll have that kind of data already available. So. As you read through the book, first thing I want you to be highlighting is character descriptions. How is each character described? What do they physically look like? What impressions do other characters have of them? We got a great example on Monday in our lecture about the description of Faro. Uh, we get more excellent descriptions as we get into this book. As you're looking through your Murder on the Orient Express book, you start on page one first page of chapter one, if you don't have the same edition of the book here. Uh, and in the second paragraph, there's a great description of Poirot as the French lieutenant sees him. He says he found a small, lean man muffed up to the ears of whom nothing was visible but a pink-tipped nose and two points of an upward curled mustache. Based on our lecture on Monday, you already know that's going to be Poirot because we talked about having just his little tip of his nose and his mustaches hanging out from underneath. Uh, whatever he's wrapping up in to stay warm. As you continue to look through the book, uh, a couple pages into chapter one, we get Mary Debenham's impression of Poirot, an impression that's quite excellent in its irony because she describes him uh, as the little man removed his hat. What an egg-shaped head he had. In spite of her preoccupations, Mary Debenham smiled. A ridiculous looking little man. The sort of little man one could never take seriously. Which is hilarious because the fate of everybody in this book rests in this funny little man's hands. And so, of course, everyone takes him very seriously by the end of the novel. So look for a description like that. Highlight description not only of Poirot, but of Mary Debenham, of Colonel Arbuthnot, of Monsieur Bach. Every time a new character is introduced, we're going to get a description of that character. Make sure that you highlight that description as you go through your reading. We also want to look at racial and cultural stereotypes in this book. There are a ton. And so anytime somebody makes a remark that seems like it might be racist, highlight that thing. Uh, there's a lot of instances where uh, Poirot is discounted because he's a Belgian and they just don't know anything. Uh, the Italian is the first suspect in the murder because apparently they like to stab. That's a, a racist overgeneralization of the Italians at this time. Uh, the British think they're significantly better than everyone, so you're going to see those kind of things cropping up in this book. So make sure that you're highlighting any of those um, racial, cultural stereotypes. Anything that feels like it might be vaguely racist, highlight it. And finally, we're going to be highlighting foreshadowing. Anytime that you feel like somebody is saying a statement that could come true later or something that seems ominous, something that might engage Murphy's Law, go ahead and highlight that in the text. There's a lot of great foreshadowing 
that leads us to discover who the actual murder is later on. Some practical methods continued. Uh, do write notes in the margins. Not a bad thing to write in this book. Uh, if you have questions, write down the questions in the margins. If you've got ideas about who might be the murderer, write those down. Uh, if you're just wondering why something happened, write that down. It's basically a screenshot of your thought process at that moment in time so that when you go back through this book, you can kind of see the journey that your brain took uh, and relive some of those moments as you begin writing your essay and as you're trying to think back to what your initial impressions were. This will make that much, much more easier uh, to remember. So for some practice, hopefully we'll have some time to chat about this real briefly in class today, but if you have uh, the 2017 edition of the text, uh, these page numbers will work for you. And if you don't, it's going to be a scavenger hunt. Uh, so if you take out your books, all of this is in chapter one. So you just have to carefully read chapter one uh, and highlight these things. On page one, there's a great description of Hercule Poirot. Highlight it. Pages eight and nine have great descriptions of Mary Debenham. Highlight those. Page nine also has a description of Colonel Arbuthnot and an example of cultural bias. And page 12 has a clue that we could call foreshadowing. So I want you to find those elements, highlight them. This is good practice for what you're going to do throughout the rest of your reading. I want to make sure that you're highlighting carefully, you're reading carefully, and this is a good way to practice those skills in chapter one. So I highly recommend, now that you've read chapters one through five, go back to chapter one and highlight these sections. And finally, homework over the weekend. All of this is in your calendar posted on Canvas. You should have already read Murder on the Orient Express, chapters one through five. Over the weekend, you're gonna be reading chapters six through eight, uh, which is pages 52 through 78 in the 2017 movie release edition of the text. Uh, and then you're gonna be answering the questions uh, Murder on the Orient Express for chapters one through five by September 27th at midnight. So if we take a look at that, it's going to be in our discussions. And we'll scroll down until we get to the Murder on the Orient Express questions. You're gonna be answering these questions. There are 10 questions. You wanna answer these incomplete sentences that are carefully proofread to make sure that you've got all the information you need and also try and include MLA in text citations. I've included an example for you here so you can see how that works. MLA in text citations for a novel include just the author's last name and the page number on which you found the quote. Many of these questions will require a quote to answer so make sure that you include those direct quotes along with your answer for questions one through ten. There is a note at the end of this discussion board that says if you already know how the story ends Pretend like you don't. We don't want to spoil the excitement for anyone in the class because when you get to that moment, it's awesome. So don't give away the ending if you already know it. If you're a speed reader and you just devoured the book and you already know the ending, throw the, <laughs> throw the key away. Keep it a secret. Pretend like you're just uh, as knowledgeable as the rest of the class for the readings that we've assigned. If you've seen the movie, you know how things end. However, as you read through the book, you'll note that there are many, many significant differences from the movie. So I want to caution you, don't use the movie instead of the book. The movie's great entertainment. Watch it, enjoy it, it's fabulous. However, it's very different than the book. So don't use it as a source. When we get to the essay, don't use it to answer these questions because then the answers will be wrong. So use the book, uh, if you know the ending, Keep mum about it, don't tell anyone, so that we can still have that excitement as we all get there uh, later on in the weeks as our readings continue. So that's the homework, that's the lecture. If you've got any questions, of course, shoot me an email, reach out on Canvas. I'll be happy to help, and I'll see you all in class soon. Have a great morning.